Welcome back. I'm going to do my pepper tour for 2022. I have over 20 varieties of peppers growing and they're all mixed together in my raised bed. So this is going to be a pepper tour and kind of a raised bed tour as well. If you want to see what all the fruit looks like, where it's at at this point at the end of August, stay tuned and I'll start the tour. Okay, I'm going to show you these three raised beds that have peppers planted all throughout. Here in the front, we have some classic ones. We have some sweet bananas. And this is a good color. When they get a true yellow, they are actually a good flavor. When they're, of course, these are small, but when they are this green color, even larger, they really don't taste good. So I wait until they're this color here. This is kind of a small one. I'm surprised he ripened. Right behind my banana pepper, I have some shishito peppers. You can see a mature one right there. This is a perfect size. I will pick this later tonight. My shishitos have not been as prolific, but I think they are hitting their stride for some reason now that we're toward the end of the year. Neighboring one is a new hot pepper for me, Mal Molly's Red Hot. It is a thin, medium-sized red pepper. And this plant here, this, despite it being kind of petite, it has produced like five or six big fruit for me, at least this size already. So I've really been enjoying these and have blended them up in my red pepper flakes. Now this behemoth, Corno de Toro, is impressively tall, but has only produced one fruit per plant. And I have like four of these plants around. I don't know what's the deal. I mean, it's a waste of space with how little production it's gotten. I'm right now thinking I won't grow it again because it's the only pepper that's not a super hot. There's another one. That's good. There are two. Only pepper that's not a super hot that I haven't har harvested from yet. That's pretty unacceptable. Uh, these pests are everywhere. That's okay. That They're just winning the war all of a sudden. But that's August. Down here I have some purple beauty bell peppers. And I didn't notice this one in the leaves. It has been getting chewed on. It's got a yellow inside. I'll have to take him off. They get to be a decent size, but this must be about where I need to pick them. They cook up green, so I've been trying to save those for fresh eating. But here next to it is an orange bell, and it produces like one or two peppers at a time, but man, they are, they are like grocery store sized. And then here's another beast. This is like the third and fourth pepper I've harvested from my orange bell, but it's a scrawny, weak little plant. And next door, I have one of my several California Wonder Bell peppers. It is not as prolific as last year. That's probably because I wasn't picking them as aggressively. I just wasn't cooking with bell peppers as much there in the beginning. That's a pest. Uh, but now I'm, I'm picking them and they're starting another flush for me. Right next to that, we have another California Wonder Bell. But this is cool. My, my Big Jim hot peppers are starting to come in. They're actually pretty mild. Like I, they taste sweet even. There's, there's a touch of heat and they are known for being like massive, like over a foot long. So this plant has five and I already picked one from it. And these look like they're ready to be picked. So we'll be getting some more Big Jim Bell, not Bell, Big Jim peppers here soon. This, I believe, is a scotch bonnet. My tag is actually not very legible, but I think it's a scotch bonnet. And these are a super hot. I've actually gotten one to ripen already, so I cooked with it or froze it. They're a cool shape. So these will be made into some super hot pepper flakes. So this first pepper here is my Buena Mulata. It is a beautiful pepper because it starts out this purple color and then it turns red so I need to pick some of these and I've been drying them for pepper flakes they are the perfect classic pepper flake flavor next to it I have a purple bell pepper that is an overachiever all of a sudden he's loaded down with like five of them they're a little small but yet but they're all gonna ripen at the same time and I tucked a couple zinnia plants in here hoping for more zinnias um, but here in the middle, we have a super hot. This is a 
Trinidad scorpion. I had to bend down and look at it. It's starting to ripen. I've picked like one so far. And then I have my peach boot jalokia pepper or ghost pepper. Nasty looking thing. There are only a few mature ones on each plant right now, but they are setting a lot of flowers up top all over. So we'll see how many I actually get. And I love this area because I have my silver slicer cucumbers growing on the trellis. So here through the top of the, the peppers and cucumbers are combining. So coming around here to the middle, I have my early jalapeno doing well. And then I have a serrano, putting out some beefy serranos here. Just a serrano, no special name. And then on the back side, we have another big gem, which, I mean, that's probably the biggest of the big gem peppers. That's got to be like the full size, like a 14 inch beast. And there's one almost ripe next to it. Isn't that just crazy? These, this plant is laden with just those two. And it's leaning on a Mall's Red Hot, or yeah, Mall's Red Hot Pepper. This plant is a little pale. And he's bending over. I think he's kind of stressed. He's being a little pulled out of the ground. And then he's, this one is leaning on the lunchbox orange peppers that I saved from my Kroger peppers. So this has been a nice plant. I am going to grow more of these next year. I just saved the seeds and it was true to type. Look at all these. I've already harvested like six or seven little mini bells. And they are sweet and orange and it's been fun to have mini bell peppers for for the cost of my lunchbox peppers here's the back side of a boot jalokia ghost pepper and my cucumber plant here at the base this is my third bed of peppers and the back side has the bush beans we'll see how they do but up front i have some super hots I have some scotch bonnets, some scorpions up here, not doing much, a little bit, not a very big plant. It gets shadier. This farther back area gets some shade, but it, it does produce. I have habanero setting fruit, which is nice because last year I failed to grow habaneros and I don't know, I just felt challenged to do it. I don't even need them. I have a ton dried, but they are beautiful. They're just bright orange when they're ripe. I have some Lesia peppers, been very prolific. You can see all the nubs where I've picked. These get just massive for the size of plant. They're very petite plants and a very sick basil I need to pull out. Moving toward the middle here, there's another Lesia. Look how big that is. That was like the full size. Nice thick walls. And look here, I'm, I'm stepping back. Here's my useless giant corno de toro pepper plant two of them i didn't think these two would survive they had a weird shaped stems which is massive and useless i don't see a single pepper on either of these plants at this point i'm just keeping them to see if they do anything and i have kind of a scrawny buena mulata there might be just coming to the end of their season because I know they could be perennial. I, I probably should have fertilized it better, but these have been producing since like early June. They are just workhorses. So I think I've gotten good enough work out of all of them. Some of my pests actually like to eat my buena mulatas by the tip. I haven't figured out what does that. And then here in the middle, I have another shishito plant. A couple ready shishitos. These are nice to just saute up once a week in a cast iron skillet, get them really blistered. Here is my last bed that has peppers in it. It is a four by eight. So I'm gonna show you here in the front, my sweet banana peppers. Pretty set back there. It's like the third or fourth flush. If peppers do flushes, it just feels like they come in waves. And I have an extremely tall serrano. I've never had a serrano get this tall. I guess it's only my second year growing them, but these dark ones, they're just, they're good size. I made some hot pepper vinegar with my serrano so far. I'm hoping to can some. And then I have some Lesia peppers turning red for me. Oh, beautiful color. 
And then here behind that one is another Lesia. Also has one ripening. I'm telling you, I want actually, actually this, this may be my California Wonder Bell Pepper. No, it's actually on the same plant as Alessia. That's weird. That's an odd shaped Alessia. Normally they're more like this for my experience so far. But um, this little sad thing right here is another banana pepper plant. A little lopsided, but he produces big banana peppers. This is definitely a California Wonder Bell. Looks pretty good. And I probably would get more production if I had been picking them better, but that's... That's a decent size, and it's not even fully done yet. And you can see behind it are more. This is all one plant. This basil's from April. It's been shaded out by my peppers, and so it still even smells good. See my failed bush beans over here. That's all right. Here we have some of those early jalapenos, nice and chunky. And we have another um, bell pepper here, kind of in between pepper waves, just a little bit growing. And then more of those Corno de Toro peppers. And the tomatoes are coming in, but look, here's the biggest Corno de Toro pepper. At least it's going to be big. So, those are all my peppers for 2022, and thank you for watching this tour.